Hi guys, welcome to Truck and Travel. My name is Cinnamon. My husband Derek and I are FedEx Custom Critical Independent Contractors and we team drive. So there's been a lot of talk. People see our trucks and um, in different videos, people will say if it's a good idea to have our kind of truck or if it's a bad idea and what kind of freight, you know, how small the loads are and have a bunch of questions. So kind of wanted to go over uh, the difference between LTL freight, which means less than load and uh, expedited exclusive um, freight. So I'm gonna go over that, but before I do, I wanted to ask you guys, before hearing the information that I'm going to be telling you guys about, do you think this truck is a good idea? So we have a 20 foot box. You guys are used to seeing big semis, 53 footers, uh, 18 wheels. <laughs> and that's what you usually think of with semis and delivering. And then you, you see our truck, which is a smaller truck. And what, your, what are your thoughts even to begin with? So if you guys wanna comment below, and share that. We'd love to hear what people think. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and go over the difference between the two. So we're going to go ahead and start with LTL. So uh, less than freight uh -huh. is what LTL stands for. And basically the, the definition of it is a combination of freight together, splitting the cost of what a full truck would cost to ship. Uh, to send to deliver loads. So um, you'll have people who want to just deliver one freight or, you know, anything that's basically less than what a full truck would be for a, a 53 foot semi. So that's what LTL is. Um, so there's benefits with LTL and then there is um, definitely um, things that are just you don't want to compromise with it. So just kind of going over just basically the benefits of it would be the cost. LTL freight is cheaper. Um, but the way that LTL works with the logistics is that you could either, um, you'd have somebody in the area, a local driver who picks it up and takes it to a hub or a terminal. Um, and then it gets, uh, or you can, take it to the terminal yourself. You can, you know, take your, your freight directly to the terminal and then it'll go from there. Now, from there, um, it can either be put onto a truck with a bunch of other stuff, you know, that has a bunch of different stops and everything, or it could be put on a truck with a bunch of other items that aren't yours, uh, but, but come from a different, a bunch of different places. And then it'll leave the terminal and be on that truck and then it'll go to another terminal where depending on the distance, uh, it could take a lot, a long time uh, to get to where it's going because uh, it changes many hands. It uh, could go from, you have a lot of unloading and loading, it just, it just depends on you know the distance of it. So say you're going to a long place and you drop the freight off. So it'll go from that terminal uh, onto another truck with other freight and then it'll go to another terminal and then it gets loaded so then you have another driver who is touching it and the big thing is that it basically will up the probability of getting damaged because you're having many people who are touching it you're having the act of loading and unloading and if you're in this industry you understand that especially with different people loading uh, using forklifts and and all of that um, accidents happen. So you have more probability of, of stuff getting, getting damaged. Um, so if it gets to the final destination, the final terminal destination, it'll go from there um, onto a local delivery truck that has a lot of different stops. So I'm sure that everybody has seen like different tracking and stuff and they're like, well, why is it in this place? You know, when it could just go right here? Well, it has to be delivered to a terminal and then the local delivery person will take it from there. Um, so it can take a lot of time. So that's kind of where you're compromising is the handling, uh, lots of hands on it, uh, probability of it getting damaged can go up and then it can take a lot of time. So if it's not something that's very vital that needs to be delivered right away, um, LTL would be a good way to do it because then, you know, it could be, uh, you can split the cost with other people who are sending freight and everything. So before I go over expediting exclusive use, I did have a question for you guys. Would you rather drive a 53 footer or 
a expediting truck like this that has a big sleeper. So comment below and let us know what you guys think. <laughs> um, so talking about an expediting exclusive use, basically uh, when you call to get this service, you'll get a specific truck that is uh, assigned to you depending on what services that you want. So um, depending on if is it a there's all these different services that are that are offered. So you can get for security, you can get temperature, hazmat, TSA. My cat's trying to get a fly <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, you can also get tanker. So if, by the way, if you're ever behind one of these trucks, uh, the slow expediting truck, and it's going very slow around curves and stuff, and you're thinking, why is it going so slow? we actually might have some liquid that are in uh, big containers in our box. So we also do tanker. So there's a bunch of different um, services uh, and each different area can go into separate services in that area. Like for instance, for temperature, um, there's, there's different uh, ranges that you have to stay in depending on what the freight is, um, which we'll actually go into that a little bit more in a second. Um, so when you're getting when you're ordering expedited exclusive use and you're getting the truck that's assigned to you, uh, another thing, uh, specification is, do you need a solo driver or do you need a team driver? So if you have, a, um, the distance is not that far and a solo driver can do it, awesome. If you need a team where you have um, a lot of miles, and the benefit of this too is if you have a load that you need right away, you can have a team where the, the truck can constantly be moving because there's plenty of hours between two people. You can have um, a lot of miles covered in a smaller amount of time than if you would have just one driver trying to do it because then they do have to take that 10 hour uh, reset, you know, or break off time. Um, and then depending on if you have like temperature, do you need, um, do you need it to be constantly surveillance? Like the entire trip from point A to point B, um, there's certain specific freight, uh, that you need to make sure it's in between this range and this range in temperature. And if you have a team, then you have somebody who is going to be awake the entire time to, to check on it and make sure that it stays in there. And that goes for security too. So if you have a security load that you constantly have to have somebody up front to watch the truck and make sure that everything is secure, um, before it gets from the shipper to the delivery place, then uh, you'll have that specific truck that's assigned to you also. When you get the truck that is assigned to you, expediting uh, exclusive use is, is something that people who want their freight alone on the truck. So you are basically paying for the entire box and you could have one freight. But people will do this because they want they don't want their freight mingling with anybody else's or bumping against anybody else's or any other delivery place, maybe their workers, especially with how things are right now, where a lot of places we can't go into to deliver if, um, and, and it has to be those workers who go in the box and take what they need to. Um, so if there's other places, if there's other freight that's on our box, there might accidentally, some of yours might accidentally come off with it. Um, to a different delivery place, if that makes sense. So when you're doing the expediting exclusive use, only your freight is going to be on the box. So you don't have all of these different hands that are touching it, and uh, you don't have a bunch of different stops that are taking it. Um, the, all the um, the probability of uh, you know it getting moved around a bunch and getting damaged that goes way down because basically with ours, it's going from point A to point B. For, so from a shipper to a delivery place, unless you need it a couple different places, like say you have four different different pallets and you have uh, two different delivery places, but it's still just your stuff on that truck and, you're, and the person, the driver or drivers are stopping to those specific places that you want them to, to drop to. So we don't have to go to any terminals, uh, and just those drivers that are assigned to it. And that's the thing too. So if you're having like a secure load, uh, depending on what services you get with us, you actually um, will get 
depending on what on the service uh, there's a service where you will get an email that will have our pictures like me and Derek's pictures so and our names so you know exactly who to expect and everything and even if you don't opt for that uh, for that service you'll still know that there's just one set of drivers or one driver who takes it from A to B. It's not all these different hands that are that are touching it. So other than the benefit of having exclusive use, you're going to have um, different industries and different uh, places that will use this. So kind of when it comes into a factor of if you want it to be an exclusive use and expedited, expedited ex exclusive use, I guess uh, a couple different areas. It's going to be time, security, temperature. Those three are like our major area. So as far as time, um, if, if what you need is very vital to continue, um, you're going to pay a higher rate, but it's, but it's going to be vital. So, um, an example of that is if you have a certain part that, uh, needs to be shipped to you. And even if the part isn't expensive, you're going to pay a good amount because you're going to get it fast. You're not going to, you know, the probability of it being damaged is going to go down. And basically you're going to get it fast. Like the time is very vital because say you need that part, um, in order to, that goes to a bigger machine or, um, say it's some kind of chemical or something that you need that basically is going to play a part in a bigger, the bigger picture that is going to make you a lot of money. So even if that small thing that needs to be shipped, uh, doesn't cost that much, uh, you know, to have, but you need it right now, expediting, will get it there fast and it'll get your, you know, you keep your business to keep moving. We did have, uh, one time, I think it was like 20 pounds, this, this tiny thing. And it, and I think it was something that went to a bigger picture basically. So we do have that all the time where time is very, is a very big factor of that. Um, security is also a really big factor. Um, like I said, you could have, um, the, the option where you're emailed our picture, our names, you know, who's going to have it. You know, there's not going to be a bunch of hands. There's not going to be lost freight. Um, it goes specifically from point A to B or however many stops you need it. Um, temperature is also a big one because, um, when you do have the team, uh, drivers, you're going to have somebody always monitoring and making sure that it's between the range that you need it to be in. So that's a really big, those are big things. And, and here's the cool thing too, is that you actually, um, anybody can hire, uh, this different, um, the expediting uh, trucks and everything for what they need. So kind of a cool example of that is that someone in our fleet actually had, uh, it was just an individual, they uh, had the box full of groceries and, you know, refrigerated things. And so they actually dropped it off to their house, like unloaded it and everything. And this person bought all these groceries because they were donating it to different places. Um, so that's an example. We've also had different zoos who, uh, need our, you know, animals transported from this zoo to that zoo. And there's just, a, there's just a ton of different, um, scenarios and, you know, it's really cool to hear the different, you know, uh, instances where these trucks have been used too. So you can always go on, uh, the website and, uh, it'll, it'll tell you the different, you know, options and stuff. So if you were interested in that. So after hearing what we trans, tr you know, what we transport and um, just the different areas and having it being team and that it's basically stuff that is very, very important and vital. Um, what do you guys think now? Is it something that you would want to do? Is it something that uh, you would be interested in and you know, have you ever seen these trucks? So comment below Let us know what you guys think or if you guys have any other questions um, Maybe something I, I forgot to mention. So comment below. Thank you very much for stopping by subscribe if you're not and Everybody have a wonderful day <laughs> and thanks for stopping in <laughs> bye